I am so excited today because I get to show you my favorite, absolute favorite, best tech knife with the D2 blade. How you doing? I'm Jay, and if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point, go ahead and click subscribe. This is the Best Tech Bison. It was sent over to me by my friends over at White Mountain Knives. I highly suggest you check them out and make sure you enter in my coupon code, Lefty Love. That will get you 10% off of your entire order. You should be looking at some specs right about now. Don't worry, I'll have them listed down in the description below just in case if any of you would like to uh, follow along throughout this video. First, let's take care of some size comparisons. Let's compare this up against uh, a couple other Best Tech knives, this one being the Paladin and the Warwolf. Here is a, a knife that was actually once one of my favorites, the Lion. Here's another knife in uh, D2 steel. This is the Ganzo Firebird FH21. We'll wrap up this section with the Spyderco Para 2. For those of you that are running really short on time, uh, let me just go ahead and say this. I like just about everything about the Bison, except for one thing, and it's actually, it's kind of a big deal. So to find out what that is, just stick around, keep watching. If you're not absolutely in love with this specific uh, version, it actually comes in a couple different uh, G10 colors. There's even one in uh, half carbon fiber, the other half titanium, and with a regular stone wash blade. Starting with the blade, and we're looking at, it's a D2 steel that's flat ground with a really nice black wash finish. I always appreciate it because it's going to help to hide uh, wear and tear from everyday use and notice yes the pocket clip and this side of the handle this scale is also they all feature the exact same finish on it now the forward toil which yes I do love it however check out the size yeah that is it's it's a bit excessive now I do understand why they had to make it this big because if they did not you would probably be able to touch that sharpened edge when in the closed position. The action here with that flipper tab is, it's excellent. I mean, it is very, very difficult for me to get this to, to fail. And to be honest, I did, I had a feeling that the action would be really good with the bison because notice where notice how that flipper tab is is well above the the pivot now unfortunately that lock bar so especially for lefties if you rest your finger or thumb on that lock bar it you will not be able to deploy the blade as soon as you remove it though it's fine it's not a huge deal because at least look at that i mean there's plenty of room to rest your fingers. Some of the other reasons uh, that this this action is is so good is going to be well the ball bearing pivot that the blade is riding on and the very very strong detent. I've got it upside down which makes it a heck of a lot easier to shake the blade loose and you can see no nope, no way I absolutely cannot do it. And closing this knife is is just as good as opening. Let me show you. Did you see that? So yes, you can do that thumbnail closure. Actually, it's really easy to do it with this, but did you, I mean, check out that closing. Yeah, that is dropping shut right out of the box. Now this frame is, let's take a look at, uh, it's kind of it's locking up at about 15 percent and let's check the centering oh my yes look at that that's just about perfect the 4.75 inch handle it's going to be half g10 and then the other side is titanium and those scales they are very they're very comfortable because there are no sharp edges anywhere 
on this handle. And you can see I wear a medium sized glove and I can fit all four of my fingers on this 0.51 inch thick handle and if you choke up of course there's going to be even more room so for those of you with uh, larger hands the traction that's provided by this uh, by the g10 side is it's it's pretty good and there is the some jimping on the flipper tab and then you can see one other spot on that blade spine uh, you know what it's not the best jimping yeah it's just not effective. Now this is how you do a milled titanium pocket clip because honestly it is it's perfect. It's deep carry. It's going to be just a uh, tip up only and no no lefty love today just for righties, but check out that one screw that's holding on the clip. It's also pulling double duty as a body screw. I like that, very, very efficient. How's about we see how this 3.85 millimeter thick blade, let's see how it cuts. Oh yeah, well you saw me just power through that cardboard. Holy cow, let's check the finish. Oh yes, still perfect. Wow, that is an excellent slicer. Before I go ahead and toss this up on the scale, I just wanna show you that for the most part, I mean, it's partially open construction with that uh, backspacer, which is in fact titanium as well. Very surprised by that. And if we look, hopefully you can see this, we look on the inside, and there is some skeletonization going on just on the titanium side. They milled out a couple pockets in an effort to reduce the weight. Let's see how they did. Wow, they did fantastic. 4.2 ounces, which is gonna be roughly the equivalent of one, two, three, four, five, about five AA batteries or almost, wow, almost the exact same weight as another Best Tech knife, the Paladin, which I have previously reviewed. So at the end of this video, if you look up to the corner, yep, right there, you can click on the icon and you can watch my full review. Before we get to my potential deal breakers, I do have just a, a question for you. All I'd like to know is what is your absolute favorite best tech knife in the D2 blade steel? Let me know down in the comment section below. So I have three potential deal breakers and one nitpick. And let's start with the nitpick. And really it's just regarding the, the hardware. God, imagine what this would look like if they used black hardware instead. Oh, number two is regarding the pocket clip and the fact that it is only for righties, no lefty love. And number three is regarding the grip because if you're not choking up, you're not utilizing that forward choil, your hand if you notice is is kind of far back from the blade so it's like you almost have to use the forward choil and the last potential deal breaker is the price which we're going to get to in just a second so where does that leave us with the best tech bison well I, I have to tell you this is one of the very few knives where i i didn't feel that I needed to modify it right out of the box. Usually there's something like with the pocket clip, you know, I'll have to put on a deep carry or sometimes I like to attach that quick thumb stud, but no, nothing. I consider the Bison to be a harder use type of knife with just such a simple design. 
even though I love this knife, it's still going to be tough for me to, to recommend it because of the $110 price tag. Yeah, you, you heard me right. Yes, the action is incredible. Action is absolutely incredible. The steel being D2, sure, it should hold an edge for, for a while. And it's made with, uh, you know, titanium and, and G10. But is all that stuff worth $110? This is almost double the price of the Best Tech Warwolf. Double the price of the Paladin and even the Lion. So you have to ask yourself, I mean, is it is is it worth the $110? And let me go ahead and I'll tell you this. I still bought it and I I definitely plan on keeping this. So hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go ahead and click subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, maybe leave a thumbs up and I'll see you at the next video. You guys take care.